the mole? <laughs> Where's the mole? <laughs> oh. I think we, we would go. know Maybe the dogs there. would start getting shot and all that. Um, <laughs> or, the thing is, once we're done with the scalder and the plucker, then we can plug in the back and see up there. And the bags are in the camera. So, will, will you uh, kind of give approximate costs as we go along through this stuff? Like for oh, equipment. Cost, yeah, for Co the equipment? Cost yeah. Of, of these two pieces of equipment right here. Is about fifteen hundred. I think so. Ah. Around there, fifteen hundred dollars, and 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 trust me, my whole goal. I don't know what Nicole's whole goal yeah. here for this. My whole goal is, I want your first experience to be enjoyable, because and, and that's that's why we're using some equipment. Yeah, we could butcher a chicken on a clothesline here, hand pick it, and and do all that. It's not as enjoyable. I can show you how to do that after Joel's done if you really want to know. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you can do that, but I can tell you the secret to the pick is the scald. So if you're having trouble with the pick, it's always the scald. Always the scald, okay? And, um, and so what I like is to do this in a way with, with a, 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 this is very nominally priced equipment. And, and, and if you don't like it, the resale, you can sell it for as much as you bought it for. There's a hot, hot resale market for this stuff. And if you like it, you can start butchering for other people. You could, uh, or you can, you could uh, rent it out a little bit and get your money back. I mean, um, when you when you think of the things that people spend fifteen hundred dollars on, <laughs> this right here, and I love David Schaefer's little moniker. He says, this right here, these two pieces of equipment should be as common as a lawnmower. Yeah. When these two pieces of equipment are as common as a lawnmower, we will completely revolutionize the food system in the U.S. And the yeah. other thing is that we spent the whole weekend talking about building community and relationships. So if you just choked at $1,500 because you're only doing 20 birds a year, yeah. how many of you live near each other who are only doing 20 right. birds a year? Do a co-op. Yeah, yeah we, we have a co-op with ours. Every single person I know who has who has offered to um, to collaborate butchering chickens, whether it's you bring them to me or I bring my equipment to you or, you know, in any kind of collaboration you want to imagine, every single person I've met anywhere in the U.S. that offered that in their community is besieged with phone calls. Oh, please. Well, that that I, be you know, a, because a lot of people have back and, you know, look, in 2020, think about this, in 2020, one million Backyard flocks of chickens started up. One million. We're now at 2023. Those chickens are needing to be processed. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Are we all here? We're all ready. Okay. So, um, so we come to this um, without rose-colored glasses, but also with a deep sense of appreciation and respect for taking a life. And I, you know, I don't want to get all mystical and weird on you. But, but the fact is, this is serious business. We're taking a life, there's gonna be blood. And so the way we elevate this sacrifice to a place of sacredness is the life that this life was, the life that this life had prior to today. There is no sacredness in a Tyson chicken being processed. They're just glad to get out of their misery, okay? These chickens, have been able to express their chickenness, to enjoy sunshine, grass, bugs, care, and the chickenness of their chicken. And so this sacrifice is elevated to a place of sacredness rather than de-elevated to a place of sacrilege. And so um, I just always like to kind of make that point that this isn't just, yes, we're gonna have good time, but it's also, uh, we, we honor the, the chicken as we take its life. Okay, so the key is, so let's, let's get going here. Um, uh, nice, nice. You get to choose your knife. You get to choose my knife. You can't to choose it first. Oh, okay. <laughs> what if I choose the knife? Sorry. <laughs> 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 
So you want a, you want a sharp knife. And um, again, these cones, these cones um, um, control the control the bird. What you're trying to do here's the goal. The goal is to get the jugular cut, but not send the bird into shock. Because if the bird goes into shock, then it shuts down the autonomic nervous system and the heart stops, the lungs stop, everything stops. And um, if and when you get chickens out of the grocery store, a lot of times you'll notice all the black around the bones, that's clotted blood that did not come out of the bird because it went into shock when it was processed. This is one reason why we don't work with any third-party animal welfare certifiers because they only recognize three humane killing techniques. Electrocution, suffocation, or gassing. All three are highly traumatic, they're inexact, and they're actually not very safe for the worker. And so what I'll show you is basically a halal kosher where you simply cut the jugular and the bird goes brain dead in just about two seconds. And you can tell by poking their eye and if their eye is nothing, then you know they're not there. Uh, it's the sensation for them, it's the sensation of when we put our head down for a while and then we raise up real quick and gotta kinda get that lightheaded feeling, that's the sensation for them, okay? The way to do that is Brand new, brand new, boy. <laughs> well built. Yeah. The way to do that is to make sure that you're cutting as close up here under the waddles as possible, because the the arteries come up like our neck. You feel them the same thing, and then they kind of spread here under our jaw. Are you with me? They don't come right up under our mouth. All right, they spread. So the closer you get to the mouth, they spread, and you have a better chance of just getting the jugular and not cutting the windpipe. That's the idea. Now, while I've got this chicken, I'll just show you this. A lot of people don't know how to pick up a chicken, all right? So the official way to pick up a chicken gently and humanely is to put your middle finger, put your middle finger between her legs like this, and let her rest in the palm of your hand like this. That way, if you're wanting to look at that chicken and you know examine her, you can turn her all around and move her around, and and um, she's pretty comfortable. And you can you know you can look at feathers, you can look at whatever you want to, and her poop is always away from you. <laughs> okay, yes. and and she can't claw your hands because by by holding her like this with her legs between your fingers. If she starts to try to bicycle on you, she's just hitting the air. I see people try to hold a chicken, you know, and they're getting clawed to death. The chicken's in there running a the bicycle and clawing their arms and they're, ah, you know. And they're, but you see how, how, how uh, happy and gentle that bird is just in the palm of my hand because there's nothing to scratch. You give her something to scratch against, now she's going to start scratching and, and, and working on you. So, all right. So we're going to... We're gonna put the bird in, head down. How old is the bird? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks, Eight weeks today. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then we're going to, all right. So I'm gonna hold under her head with my thumb and I'm gonna come, see, it's very close, all right? All right, I did not cut the windpipe. Um, so the, no, the sides of it. Cut, I, I cut both sides to speak. That that jumping around is simply muscle spasms. She's not there. Okay, that's just muscle spasms. Want me to kill another one, or uh, we want to take this one all the way through by itself, or what do you want to do? It's um, the one that gets you. Yeah. There's always a break, and then you think it's done, and then it's not done, and that's when people get blood. Yeah. Now these kind of I would, I would not use these cones for my chickens. These are turkey cones. Yeah. Turkey cones. 
a chicken cone, she would not be able to flip up around. So the point is, yeah, the point is that this corral, if you will, this corral is, is too big for these chickens. But that's what we have, that's what we're gonna use. Let's do one more demo just yeah. so they mm -hmm. can um, okay. they can see. Because I think the scary the scariest part is like how do I get that cut? <laughs> Uh, bring the knife back. It's a... Okay, so how I put them in the cones is I hold the feet with one, I hold the wings with the other, with the other hand. And and the, the thing about this is you want to get into a system, okay? Uh, you don't want to be reinventing your technique every chicken. Um, and so I'm really... I'm being anal about the technique because it's the technique that means I don't have to think about technique anymore. You know, I, I'm, I'm now, I'm totally in the moment, I'm working with the bird, okay, and I'm not thinking about technique. Um, so, so by holding the legs with my right hand and the wings with my left, she can't flap, she can't get all stressed. And, there's no stress in that chicken. That chicken is not stressed at all, okay? Um, and, and it's partly because she's She's uh, held tight, okay? So who is in the front row for the last cutting? Can we get people from the back to the front, people from the front to the back, and you've already seen how that was done, please? Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> stick her down in the, in the cone. You got it. Okay. I'm gonna put my thumb right under her, her mouth right here, under her beak. And then I'm going to come as close to those waddles as possible. And you notice I did not cut the windpipe. And she is, okay, there's her eye, she's gone. Well, why do you, why do you not cut the windpipe? What, why do you not cut the windpipe? You don't want to cut the windpipe because you want the lungs to continue to function okay. and for her not to go into the top. Okay. Okay, it's the whole idea. Is, is a is a gentle uh, where you where you make it brain dead, but everything else continues to function. Okay. In fact, in our system, a lot of times when we go to get to evisceration, the heart's still pumping. So the heart is nice. actually pumping the blood out of the body rather than you're you're trying to get it drainage. And I can tell you, having we've done some birds at federal federal inspector processing facilities, and they get about half the blood that we get out of the birds. It, it's significant. Okay. Okay. Because because they electrocute. Because under federal inspection, you can't do this. This this is uh, you, know, you you you've got to you've got to stun them somehow before you do this. And and it's unfortunate because because stunning for them in this is a little less precise than uh, than what I've just done. Okay. All right. Um, so you know, usually by you know within um, you know a minute and a half, they're pretty much done. What they're going to do, okay? And um, sorry, you can't. You can't. Yeah. Just a little bit. How's that spell button? It's, it, it's always good to do at least two at a time because your picker, they, they bump up against each other and they pick a lot better. One Picking one's real hard because they, they don't tend to flop around as well. You get two of them, they're bouncing against each other and they actually flop a lot better and pick a lot better. So I never like to do just one, I like to do at least two at a time. Alright, I think we're done here. Okay. Now we'll go to the scalder. We're at 152. 152. All right, we'll get five. Um, we'll throw some ice on there. Uh, uh, we'll just hopefully it won't be too bad. Did you turn the temperature down? Yes. Okay. So the key. So the scald water should be 145. And and you can't just set them in and leave them. You want to you want to pull them out. And of course, you know, a we have an automatic scalder. You put it in, it automatically it just spins, and and they get the agitation. The soap in the water. You want some soap suds in the water. That breaks the surface tension of the water, so you get way better water penetration 
We say it makes the water wetter, okay? So these feathers are in little follicles. They're like little uh, zits, little pimples. And so by, by um, putting them in and pulling them out, rather than just leaving them in there, you actually get way better water penetration. That's why all automatic scalders have some sort of, of, of uh, plate that, that, that spins um, or, or something that goes up and down. Um, and, and so, so you, you, need, you need to bring them in and out of the water and this, this will take about a minute and 20 seconds, okay? If the water is too hot, the skin will break in the picker and if the water's too cold, the feathers won't come out. <laughs> okay, so you, so this is the the scald is really, really uh, the, your 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 quickest. So I can kind of yeah, yeah. That, that, that's feeling. Where do you test when you go to pull one? Which is any particular On the wings. part? Wings. 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 Yeah. All right. I think these guys are about ready. You get just the water on there. Okay. Are we good? Yep. Ready? All right, we'll turn the picker turn on. Turn the water on. Oops, sorry. Yep. So the cold water in the picker actually acts as a blanch. That actually acts as a blanch. If you've ever blanched green beans or corn or whatever, and it actually helps the feathers to come off better having that uh, cold water spraying on them. Okay? This little picker Dave Schaefer got, he got the first one in Indonesia. And then he, he brought it home and uh, and uh, manufactured them himself here, okay? If you've ever plucked a chicken, you know this is magic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Grandma would have given her eye teeth for this, for this little deal, okay? So the, the, the hot water, um, isn't that cool? So the, the 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 cold water is it make, you know gets the feathers makes them clean and uh, we're good to go. All right, now we'll go. Oh, it must be that quick. <laughs> yeah. Heritage breeds, but yeah, it's a game changer. I did my first 25 birds by hand back in the day. Which that was, that was quick. Idea. That was really quick. That wasn't even a minute, was it? No, that wasn't. That wasn't long. Yeah, there might be a couple stray feathers on there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll use this one. Okay, I'll get this one out of your Thank way you. so we don't. All right. Okay. Now, uh, what kind of surface do you need to do this? And uh, so you don't need a you don't need a big. Let me just let me just uh, point out this that you really know your scald is good when the when the skin comes off the legs, and that's one reason why it's so nice to have. Um, to have a rotary scalder, or if you're actually using that, I would suggest getting a good pair of, of really good rubber gloves, because I was I didn't want to burn my knuckles, okay? And uh, so so if you're hand scalding, that way you can push this. See, this was the leg I wasn't holding. Mm -hmm. This is the leg I was. The problem is that yellow skin is the hardest part of the bird to scald, but if you're holding it by a leg, it's the last it's the last in, first out every time. The tenderest part is the breast, so it's easy to over scald, and then you have a torn breast, and then the bird isn't pretty. Okay, and so, um, so um, if, if you're actually going to do this for real, I'd get a nice pair of good rubber gloves so you can just get your hand right down in that water along with this leg, and then you won't have uh, you won't have one good and one bad. All right, everything in the chicken. So this this head came off. This head didn't. I'll just go ahead and pull it off. Okay. Um, by the way, we uh, we sell all of our heads. Um, we sell all of our feet. Are you going to keep these? Oh my goodness! Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to keep all. Of them. Yes. What are the heads used for? The same as the feet? The heads um, are used for broth, Jewish mother soup, yeah. like the feet. Like the feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can thank Weston A. Price Foundation for that market. Twenty years ago, the heads, the feet, all that went into compost. Today, we need four-legged chickens to keep up with it. Uh, we started at 50 cents a pound, went to a dollar, went to a dollar fifty. I think now we're at two dollars. It's added 50 cents a chicken by being able to have a market for that. Well, if you're doing 20,000 chickens, that's $10,000. That, mm -hmm. that adds up. 
you know, like the, the junior senator that went to D.C. and he said, wow, a billion here, a billion there, it adds up to some money after a while, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> so, so we pull the head off. Don't cut the head off. A, you're going to dull your knife hitting bone. B, you're going to have sharp bone shards uh, from, from, from cutting the bone. So just pull it off. That way it always comes apart at a, at a vertebrae. All right, so it's nice and clean. Everything that you're going to cut on the chicken is in the valleys. Okay, so when we take the feet off, everybody see the valley here. Mm -hmm. You've got two ridges and a valley in between. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where we're going to cut the leg. We're going to go right in that valley, and we're going to cut that foot off. Okay? Yeah, he makes it look so easy, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pull up a little bit. So I've got the weight of the chicken pulling against me. I'm going to go into that valley, off with the foot, all right? Amazingly, as you start this process, it starts to look more and more like a chicken, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? All right. Now, position is everything. This isn't about strength. It's about position, all right? Again, valleys. These birds came fasting. If they hadn't come fasting up here in the front, this would be all bulged out with a full crop full of feed and grass and whatever. So because they came fasting, it's caved in. That's that's the depression. That's the valley. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reach it, I'm gonna pull that out, just the skin, and I'm just gonna nick it enough to get my finger in. I'm gonna open it up. Here's the crop right here. See that crop? Okay? This is the waterloo for everybody. It it you know it's not real obvious. It's just a sack there, but you know, it, it looks like a lot of other things, right? So, uh, so I get that, all right? But it's really slick. It's like snot, okay? And, and so you, you know, it's hard to grip. The reason we don't want to cut it off is because we don't want digestive juices down in the carcass. So all I want to do is loosen it. So what I do is I kind of get it under my thumb here, okay? I pull it down. Then I'm going to switch hands, pull the skin away, pull it up. Now I've got it in my left hand. Now I'm going to take my other thumb and poke it under the windpipe and the esophagus. All right, see that? I've just poked it under the windpipe and the esophagus. I'm going to pull them out of the neck. Okay, so here's the esophagus, and here's the windpipe. Feels like a, like a vacuum cord. It's got little ribs in it, okay? Those are the two pipes. That's it. I'm not going to do anything else right now. Okay? Now I'm going to flip the bird around. And I'm going to pull up here on the, on the abdomen. I want to tighten that up. Because I want to get that tight. So I cut right. So here are the pubic bones. See the pubic bones? One's right there. One's right here. Okay? I don't want to cut the vent. I don't want to cut the... We call it the poo cord. Okay? I don't want to cut the... So I'm going to pull this up tight. To, so see, see how it's sunken in? When I pull it tight, see how it elevates, comes up, that tightness, and that lets me cut without hitting guts. All right? So again, I'm going to cut right above, because remember, everything from this cut to below the vent, I'm going to lose. So I don't want to be sloppy and cut way up here. I've just lost half an ounce of skin. All right? And when you're processing, I'll show you there are three places where you can lose almost an ounce. Okay? Well, if you're selling these birds for four, I'm making this real easy for you. I'm, and I'm also finding out how good you are at math. If you're selling these birds at $4.80 a pound, okay, how much is that per ounce? $16.480. You, you know. yeah, 16 is how many? Eight. Three, good, 30 cents. 30 cents. Three times 16 is 48. Mm -hmm. Man. Man, Laura Ingalls Wilder would be really unhappy with us. Um, all right, thirty cents a pound, thirty cents an ounce. So if I lose three ounces just by sloppy evisceration, Almost that's ninety cents. Ninety cents a bird. We do twenty thousand a year. I mean, that's the official count. <laughs> that's the legal count. But who's counting? Uh, twenty thousand times ninety cents is. $18,000. $18,000. Woo! So it is in the. Recording this. 
Huh? That's worth learning this method. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's half a salary. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you're doing 20,000 birds, you probably are generating a couple salaries.